Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is February 20th, 2024, and I am going to continue now with um, explaining the things that the Lord has been showing me with respect to Job's sin, Job's sins, actually, there were more than one sin, as they relate to God's overcomers that are soon to be glorified. This is God's warning to those overcomers. Uh, God's overcomers must take this very seriously because we are right now in a very dangerous time because we were right at the end and the glorification of the sons of God is at hand and there still is a danger that someone could steal our crown, that somehow we could lose the crown of life. We must be very, very careful We begin this video with reading Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. Jesus is speaking. He says, To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write this, The words of the Holy One, the True One, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. He's talking about himself, of course. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. The Philadelphian church is the only church that has not denied Christ's name. We have come into the time now where we see blatantly Christians have denied Jesus' name. They have contradicted Jesus. The most appalling example in my mind is that of Mike Bickle and IHOP and probably because I was so um, associated with Mike Bickle for all my life. He married, he was actually the one who married my wife and I back in 1978 and we have a very long history together and so and not only that, I live in Missouri. IHOP is in Missouri. Bickle is in Missouri. I consider Missouri my jurisdiction. And so this is very personal to me. Um, very personal. I know that you have but little power. See, the Kodeshim, the overcomers of God who exist now, those of us who are alive and are left and are about to be glorified at the second coming of Christ, have little power. We have no power in ourselves. We cannot do miracles. We cannot bring people into salvation by a word. We cannot go and heal them. We cannot uh, prance around a stage and, and excite their emotions. But yet we have kept God's word. We have not denied his name. We are not antichrist, as is Mike Bickle. Mike Bickle is a type of antichrist. You need to understand that. I don't know if anybody's saying that yet. You know, a lot of people are appalled and a lot of people are finally beginning to repent. People who fed off of Mike all their lives. There are ministries out there. There are men my age who worked with Mike for decades, who fed off of his ministry, who never discerned him. They are discerning him now and they are repenting. And I want you brothers and sisters to know that we, Kodeshim, are with you. And we applaud you for repenting now. But you've got to realize you went astray. You are the sons of Levi who went astray. That Ezekiel talks about in chapter 44. The sons of Zadok, the Melchizedek priesthood, did not go astray. We discerned Mike Bickle. We knew Mike Bickle. We understood Mike Bickle. We left everything having to do with Mike Bickle. We left everything having to do with that church. We left everything, everything, everything having to do with that church. We understood it worked in demonic power. We have known it for now over 30 years. Verse 9, Revelation 3, Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Now, who is that? What's the synagogue of Satan? Everybody thinks that's Jews, okay? And because it says they say they are Jews, but lie. 
No, that's what a Christian says. A Christian, Jesus is the king of the Jews. If you say you believe in Jesus, you are a Jew. You come under the jurisdiction of the king of the Jews, and therefore you are a Jew. But the, king, the synagogue of Satan are those who act like Mike Bickle, who are anti-Christ within the thing they call the church. So it's the church of Satan, even though they say they're Christian. They are anti-Christ. They lie. They say they're Jews, but they lie. Bickle said he was a Christian, but he lied. He used, he used that to deceive people. He used that to defile women, and he used that to defile ministries around the world. Behold, I will make them, those people who say they are Jews but lie, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you. That's coming. That's coming. We were rejected our entire lives. The Kodeshim were rejected our entire lives. No one believed that we spoke truth. They all made fun of us. They all, they had nothing good to say about us ever. I still remember a church, one of the first ones, probably the first one we ever went to, my wife and I way back 40, 40 plus years ago, where a pastor of a church like that, <clears throat> I was, I knew I was called of God in 1977. And I still remember him saying, I see you at the back of the church. Well, that was accurate. He did see me at the back of the church. In fact, he saw me out of the church. The last church we tried to join was in the year 2000. And it was a Baptist church, a Southern Baptist church. We had, we had seen that the whole charismatic thing was always deception, always fraud, always working in the demonic spirit. So we thought we'd go to... We'll just go where people say they believe. I don't care if even now anymore if they even think that the gifts of the Spirit exist. At least I want to get, I want to fellowship with people who say they're Christians. So my whole family, I had five young children at that time. So there were seven of us. We were on the front row of the church. At the end of the service, we had gone through their classes like all churches have, you know, to see where you're, you know, that see that you believe and you can join the church. We sat there waiting for the elder, one of the three elders, to call us up front to bring us into the church. He never did. He never did. So church service ended. We were, my wife and I looked at each other and we left the church. And uh, <clears throat> we had two vehicles that day. I had driven a car and most of the family was in our van. And... Uh, I think I was alone, and I uh, remember driving from the church to an off-ramp onto uh, Highway 270, I think it was, and um, <clears throat> suddenly my vehicle stopped. The transmission just went out, and I had to pull over. That was the end. That was the end of my journey in the church. God had revealed the church. Back in 1989 or so, the year I graduated from law school, my wife was praying, God, show us the church. And believe it or not, God led us to Mike Bickle's church, Metro, Kansas City Fellowship, South Kansas City Fellowship. Can't remember the exact name then. Metro, Metro Christian Fellowship, I think it was called then, MCF. And then it shortly became uh, Metro Vineyard Fellowship after that. And we were there for four years. And within four years, God revealed to us what was going on. And we left the church, that church. But we tried to find the church for another six years. Seven, never could. And we've been out of the church now for 24, 25 years. And we are so happy we came out of the church because the church is the synagogue of Satan. Verse 10. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, in other words, endure until the end. Endure until the end. Jesus said this more than once. What is our end? Our end is either death in this flesh or it's glorification. It's being made into God's image. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, because you have continued to endure to the end, 
I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole earth to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Brothers, and I'm speaking to overcomers now, and I'm speaking to you who are still in the synagogue of Satan, who have still not seen the gross sin of Mike Bickle and IHOP and all the leaders who still remain with him. The hour of trial is coming upon the whole world. This last four years is just the first half of this great tribulation. Wake up. That's what he's talking about here. Because right in the middle, Jesus says, I am coming soon. And then he says, hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. Whoa. You mean I've made it this far, Father? I've made it this far, Jesus, and I could still lose my crown? Someone could still seize my crown? Oh, man. See, this is serious. We are in a serious war for our soul, for our calling. This is a serious warning to the Kodeshim of God. This is a serious warning to those who are called to overcome. It's a serious warning to those who are called to be glorified and become part of the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven in order to save and restore this entire fallen creation. Take this warning seriously. And then at the end of this section on Philadelphia, Jesus tells us the reward for the overcomer, to the one who overcomes, to the one who conquers his sin nature, to the one who continues on with me, who endures even unto death, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. That is New Jerusalem. Never shall he go out of it. See, our inheritance, my inheritance, is God himself. My inheritance. That's why the priests in the Old Testament, their inheritance was God himself. That's why they did not have their own land, because God was their inheritance. God is my inheritance. Never shall he go out of it. And I will write on him the name of my God. I do not have the mark of the beast. I will not take the mark of the beast. I have been marked with God. I have been sealed by God. I have been sealed by my Father. I will write on him the name of my God, and I will write on him the name of the city of my God, the New Jerusalem. That's our land, the New Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven. Brethren, especially you Zionists, so, so many of you are Zionists. I understand that all of IHOP and that whole teaching and that the whole group of people along with IHOP are all Zionists. They all think that this debacle going on in ancient Israel is what it's all about. They all look for a third temple to be built in ancient Israel. The temple is our is us. We are the temple of God. We who are glorified become, literally become that temple. That's what God is talking about. Turn on your spiritual eyes. Stop seeing things in the flesh. Stop seeing things according to the common interpretation of those who do not even walk in the spirit of God, who instead operate in the spirit of Antichrist. Stop listening to their, their interpretations of the scripture because they're all wrong. Zionism is evil. Come out of it. It's part of Babylon the Great. The whole, everything that's happening in the world right now is part of Babylon the Great. And the only people who are not part of Babylon the Great are the Kodeshim, the overcomers, the sons of God who are soon to be revealed. But not only that, Jesus says to the one who overcomes, I will write on him my own new name. <clears throat> My own, you are going to get a new name if you are one of the Kodeshim. He will personally name you and he will set you in your position as part of the army of God, the Joel army of God in chapter 2 of Joel, that brings a new heaven and a new earth to this world. 
they will recreate the earth. It will be as the Garden of Eden before them because of the fire of their coming. Their fire, the glory of God, the fire of God creates Eden. It doesn't destroy what is good. It destroys what is evil. Behind them, it destroys Babylon the Great. Before them, it creates a new heaven and a new earth. That's what's coming. Verse 13, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Father, I pray you will give ears to hear to those who listen to this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, in a recent video, I read Vision 1 uh, that was given to Prophet Ken Vischer that's in his The Epistle Mysteries, and it's The Walking Lake of Fire, which is chapter 73 of that. And I explained that what God was doing in that vision was showing him that he was going to bring COVID-19 upon the earth. He did not reveal what it was. It was a, it was a, um, a mystery. But the explanation is clear to me that it was COVID-19. And I want to now go to, I'll, I'll continue with what I was saying that, with respect to that, because it's the purpose of COVID-19. Why did God bring COVID-19? Especially uh, with respect to uh, the Kodeshim. He brought it with a purpose for everyone. And let me just uh, tell you what the purpose is. The purpose is this, to bring man to number his days. And this is part of the vision that Ken shared. God has brought all mankind now to the place where he should have considered his impending death, enduring to the end, with great fear and circumspection. But most men did not do that. Instead, most men blindly followed government and industry lies and propaganda in order to keep indulging in their own sinful lifestyle. So most people went along with the agenda so they could go on vacations. They kept going on vacations. They kept traveling. They took the vaccine and they just kept traveling. They thought, well, you know, it's, it's just, you know, this is life. Things happen. No, things like this don't happen. This is, this is it. This this is the great tribulation. This is the, the worst thing that has ever happened in the history of mankind. And that's what God told Ken in the vision he gave to Ken. This is the worst thing ever released upon mankind. And it came from under my hand. I'm responsible for it. Well, what is it? Remember, God puts it in the heart of the beast to destroy Babylon the Great. The beast, the rulers of this world, the head of the beast, like Nebuchadnezzar, they are the ones who make the decisions as to what is going to happen in the world. He put this idea into the hearts of the kings of the earth so that they would literally destroy their own kingdom. That's what this is all about. And why? Because God wants man's kingdom destroyed. You know, there's only two kingdoms. Man's kingdom, which Satan rules, or God's kingdom, which God rules. Which kingdom are you in? COVID-19 is all about a kingdom. God put it into the heart of the beast to destroy man's kingdom. Now, if you don't understand that, go look up the Abraham Accord coin with Donald Trump's name on it. Donald Trump, Operation Warp Speed, brought this brought this vaccine to us. Donald Trump is part of it. Don't you understand? Why do you support him now? We were all lied to. I was deceived by Trump. I voted for him twice, of which I repent. I didn't. I thought that he was really going to reveal evil and judge evil, that he really was going to judge Hillary Clinton, that he really was going to judge Jeffrey Epstein. No, never happened. Instead, look at the Abraham Accord coin, and it has the whole humanist agenda, including the vaccine on it. It's all on the Abraham Accord coin, and he did it in 2020, right before the PSYOP that made everybody think he lost the election. 
Well, what was that? That was the wound on his head that made it look like he was dead. This is all a psyop. It's still a psyop. Most men blindly follow, still follow, government and industry lies and propaganda in order to keep indulging in their own sinful lifestyle. People still have not come out of Babylon. The Lord tells us in Revelation 18, come out of her or you will partake of her sins. And if you partake of her sins, you're going to partake of her plagues. You will be judged. Now the second main reason, the second main purpose for COVID-19, God's purpose I'm talking about. Why did God put it in the heart of the beast to do this? To bring men to repent of everything that they have done wrong. Do you repent daily? Do you repent constantly? Do you repent when you even answer somebody in a wrong way because you, your heart attitude is wrong. We need to live in a constant state, state of fear and trepidation before the Lord, not fear in the thing, oh no, he's gonna hit me, he's gonna strike me, no. No, fear and honor that you want to be righteous as your Father is righteous, that you wanna be holy as your God is holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. But most men have not repented. Jesus always talks about the need to repent. Do you know the gospel begins with repentance? As soon as you understand that God exists, as soon as you understand that God exists and that he has desires for you as his creation and you begin to understand what his desires are and his ways are, you understand that you're not doing things that way, then you repent of the way you're doing them. You turn. To repent means to turn around. So you turn from your way of doing things and you go in God's way to do things. So the very first thing that happened with me, and this was a profound revelation in 1977 that when God revealed the word to me, he revealed the word to me and I came to that understanding in my own mind and I said to myself, God must have written the Bible. And God spoke to me in a very loud voice and said, that's right, Glenn. The first thing I did after he gave me then my instruction, a very quick instruction saying, I want you to teach my word. The first thing I said to myself, I still remember was, then I better do what it says because I was not doing what it said. I was an unbeliever then. I was walking in my own sinful flesh and I was doing what I wanted to do. I was partying and having fun. But as soon as I knew it was his word, because I'd been reading, I had read through the New Testament twice. I was in my third time. I was up into Deuteronomy. I had read through all the law. I knew what the law was. I knew what the sins were that were enumerated there, and I knew I was committing many of those sins. And I said that I better do what God says and stop doing the sins that I'm doing. So the second main purpose of God bringing COVID was to bring men to repentance of their sin. Those who are known by God, and this is part of the prophecy, would become contrite and repentant through COVID. COVID was used to make the Kodeshim contrite and repentant. I caught COVID the first time in, at the end of November, 2021. I did not think I would ever catch COVID. I was not wearing masks. I was going where I wanted to without fear. I thought I was protected. According to Psalm 91, 
where plagues will be all over the place, but he will keep me safe. A thousand may fall at my left, 10,000 at my right, but nothing will harm me. And that was the faith I was walking in. And I caught COVID. And I was very, very surprised. <clears throat> but it didn't end there. In th within three months time, less than three months, two and a half months, because I got over COVID within two or three weeks by going the natural way that uh, frontline doctors recommended with ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, and other things. I got over it, almost died that first time because of SARS, immediately could not breathe. And I told my wife, I just have to go outside and die because I can't breathe. And she did some things that got me to where I could breathe and I made it through the night and got the medications I needed and I made it. But two and a half months later, I began to develop long COVID symptoms that were so serious that doctor, or chiropractors at least would not even treat me anymore. They said, you're having stroke-like symptoms. I, don't, I do not want the liability of treating you. Stroke-like symptoms, heart attack-like symptoms, no strength. Reti I had to retire from uh, 33 years of law practice within two months. By middle of April, two months later, I was done. Never, ever have gone back to law practice, never will. Because now, you know, God brought me out of that to prepare me for this. So for me, I'm telling, what, telling you what COVID did to me, how it made me contrite and repentant. First, it broke my natural man. It destroyed my health. And I'm, I just got over my third bout of COVID. My body is weak. Number two, COVID caused me to doubt God. But number three, COVID caused me to seek God's face. And ultimately, ultimately, and this is what I'm sharing in this series, this warning to the Kodashim, it led me to repent of Job's sins. For I found that I walked in the same sins as Job. And I didn't know it. And I was still walking in those sins until just a little over two weeks ago until I got my letter from my Heavenly Father that felt like it was written that day. And it's a letter, a prophetic letter that Ken Vischer wrote down by revelation more than 20 years ago or right around 20 years ago. He does not know the exact date. So finally, after two and a half years of walking in death, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Finally, God brought revelation to me that has caused me to repent of the same sins as Job had to repent of. That's my warning. That is the prophetic warning to the Kodeshim, especially because you are still in potential danger if you have not repented of Job's sins. Be careful. The next video will get into the specifics of Job's sins and will help all of us, even those of us who are not called to be part of the first fruits resurrection from the dead, which is imminent. This will help everyone who seeks God's face who seeks the holiness of God.